on today's Technobabble. Using your smartphone to make videos. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi everyone and welcome again to Techno Babble. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. This is the show that helps you learn more about using video and graphic design in your church. And I'd love for you to ask your question. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact and there you can leave your questions, comments, etc. Or you can find all my contact information, which I'll list a little bit later. So before we get started, I do want to thank viewers like you who have supported this show by going all over to patreon.com slash paulallencliff. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-a-u-l-a-l-a-n-c-l-i-f. For as little as a dollar a month or up to a hundred dollars a month, you can support the show. And every little bit helps us change lives in eternity. So I really would ask that you head over there and help out. What you may not know, well, you might know it just because you've seen it around, and that is that your smartphone is a very capable video camera. Now, when I say your smartphone, I mean generally speaking. Some are better than others. Uh, some are better for one thing or the other. I have right here an iPhone 4S. Now, this is the phone that I use every day. It's my daily driver, as they say. And the iPhone 4S was one of the earlier phones to get 1080p video or full HD. Now, there were also Android phones that had it. Um, but now, just a few years later, we're starting to see phones get 4K resolution. So, in some ways, sometimes they're better than using a DSLR or even a standard video camera. So, how do you get the best out of using your smartphone camera? Well, I've got some tips. First off, I want you to understand your smartphone camera and recognize that it has limitations. One of these limitations is control. Depending on the camera app that you're using, you may not be able to affect shutter speed, uh, the ISO, or um, it's really difficult to change out the lens on these things. Changing out the, uh, changing the aperture to tweak the f-stop, kind of difficult. When you've only got a little bit of space to work with, there's really not a lot you can do optically. So there is a lot that can be done in software, and you need to know that. And you need to know the advantages of different video camera apps. One thing that I'm kind of looking forward to in the latest version of iOS that's due out this fall is the ability to granularly control all the aspects of the phone camera. So if there comes a time where I can say, hey, it's okay to do auto ISO, but I want control over the shutter and I want control over the uh, f-stop, that might give me the ability to do some fun things that right now I can't. But I know these limitations, and when I know these limitations, I can work in them, and I can work with them. So that's what I want you to consider is what the limitations are to your smartphone camera and how to work within those limitations. Also, I want you to get a steady shot. Here, I've got this right here. This is something that I just picked up. Um, 
Steve Washer over at Brainy Video uh, suggested picking up this guy, which this extends, and it's basically like a selfie stick. I, I don't know what else to call it. They call it the uh, GoPro monopod, but it's not really a monopod because it doesn't sit on the ground. And uh, while I suppose it would work for a GoPro, it came with this. Now what this is, is a, um, a little clamp that clamps onto a smartphone. So I'm going to clamp this onto my phone. And now I have something that I didn't have before, and that is a quarter twenty hole that I can screw a tripod into. So that's something that you should really think about, um, is getting some sort of clamp. Uh, Glyph is one that was uh, famously made for the iPhone. One like this, which is spring-loaded and holds on to a smartphone. They make bigger ones for the larger Android phones. So that you can get a steady shot. When you have your phone on a tripod, you have control over how much it moves, if at all. And that's really nice. It's really nice to be able to get a smooth pan because you've got it on a good tripod. It's really nice to get just a steady shot that's not jerking all over the place. A few years ago, our senior pastor went out of town and he went with his son who, and the video team sent him with uh, just one of these flip cams that they sold a few years ago. And you could tell that his son, who at the time was about 14 or 15, was running it because he'd get distracted and the camera would drift off and the pastor would go out of the shot. Then he'd come back and we needed to show the video because it was actually a an interview with the president of our denomination. So, you know, a kind of a big deal. But the video was just bad. If they'd been able to set up the shot, put it in a tripod, and just leave it, that would have been great. So that's another tip is get something in order to have a steady shot. I mean, even if it's you take a binder clip, you drill a quarter inch hole in the bottom of the binder clip, you clip that to your phone, and then you put a nut in there to hold uh, to the tripod, that would work. That's an almost free solution. I don't like it because of the pressure the binder clip puts on the, the glass of the phone, but it does work. So I want you to consider that as something that you should do as well. Next get the best sound you can. Now, most likely the jack on your smartphone's uh, earbud is a TRRS, tip ring ring sleeve. So it looks a lot like a headphone jack, only it's got an additional ring. I talked about this earlier this week in the um, Tech Help for Churches show when I was talking about bare minimum camera equipment and bare minimum podcasting equipment, but suffice it to say there is an iPhone to XLR cable. There's also something made by a company called iRig and oh here it is just off to the side here and it has the tip ring ring sleeve. Let's see if I can get that. It's got the tip ring ring sleeve and it's got this box. Now the advantage of this over just an XLR cable, even though this has XLR, is you've got a gain control. That's nice. But what's even nicer is phantom power. So I could potentially connect my shotgun mic here. I've got this shotgun mic. I can connect my shotgun mic directly to my iPhone and then I then we're cooking with gas right then we can really do some stuff or I could connect this lavalier mic 
which is also phantom powered, um, although it has a battery in it. If I use the phantom power function, if the battery goes dead, I'm fine. Same for my shotgun mic. So that's an additional advantage. Also, you've got to think about where you put stuff when you're when you're shooting with your smartphone. So uh, shooting in a more quiet area, even if you have a good mic, is going to be better. Excuse me. You'd think it was after 1 a.m. or something. Um, by the way, I'm pre-recording this at 1, 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> so it matters when you, where you place things, you know, if you're in a really noisy environment, even with a good mic, you're going to have some problems. So that's uh, something that I would suggest as well when it comes to getting the best sound you can. Get the best lighting you can. Right now, if I go outside with my smartphone, I'm not going to get a very good shot because, as I say, it's 1.11 in the morning. So, I can't expect to get something good then, but if I were to shoot during the golden hour, you know, within an hour of sunrise or sunset, I'm going to get a much more pleasant image. Likewise, if I set up some studio lights, I'm going to get a much more pleasant image. So, lighting well will really help uh, your smartphone video. Also, make sure that you're set to record in the highest resolution. I know it takes up a lot of space, but you can always shrink down the shot once you've got it. But once, if you shot it at 640 by 480 or 320 by 240, even worse, let's say you recorded it at 320 by 240 and then you want to upload it, it's not going to get to 1080p. It's definitely not going to get to 4K, that's bad too. So, shoot it at a better resolution, and if you don't need it, you can throw that away. So, by throw that away, I mean you can transcode it into a smaller resolution, and that's fine, but you'll still have the original. And if you change your mind later, you've still got the original. Next, I want you to minimize edits. The format that these record in is a little lossy to begin with, so don't edit and edit and edit and re-edit and export it and re-edit and export it, re-import it, edit it again. It's not a problem to chop off the beginning and end. It's not a problem to edit it within uh, iMovie on your smartphone or on your computer or something like that, but just don't don't over process these things because that will cause it to get noisier and not as pretty. And you're not starting off with uncompressed video. You're starting off with a compressed video. So just like editing an mp3 over and over again can cause you problems same thing here finally if you can make sure you choose an app that allows you to lock focus and exposure these are these smartphones are designed to change with the environment and change with what's going on and that's fine but you don't want a cloud in the sky to make all of a sudden your shot gets really bright for a second and then the cloud passes and then it gets really dim again it's just craziness so you want to lock the focus and exposure also you don't want um, a fly flying by to cause the exposure to lock on the fly and then it goes in and out of exposure or, in and out of focus for just a second. So those are just some of the things that I'd love for you to do. If you want to read more about doing video, then uh, you could certainly go over and take a look at my book. 
This is Church Video School, which is available on trinitydigitalmedia.com slash cvs for Church Video School. And in that book, I go through 90 short lessons to take you from a video newbie to up to speed really quickly. So in three months, you could be up to speed on video. And until September 1st, 2014, I hear from the publisher that they're knocking $5 off the regular price, which will be $19.97, and right now it's just $14.97. If you want to think of it this way, skip a latte once a month and you can pay for this book for, for the three months that you're doing it. There you go. One latte a month pays for this book. And uh, so I'd love for you to get a hold of it, and I'd love for you to use that in, in your church as you're going out and uh, changing eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'd love for you to join the conversation, as I mentioned earlier. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact. Or give me a call, 1-877-763-3246. That's 1-877-POD-ECHO. You can always drop me a line on email, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Or leave comments below this video, whether you're on YouTube or on trinitydigitalmedia.com. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know why. It's free. It's easy, and you won't miss any episodes. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe, or if you're on YouTube, click the subscribe button. Can't get easier than that. Also, if you like the show, you can always head over to Patreon, like I mentioned earlier, or just give me a review in iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, I've set up links for iTunes at trinitydigitalmedia.com slash iTunes reviews, all one word. So until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com.